Tony from LearnAutoBodyInPaint.com. Thank you for watching this short video. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is air pressure required to paint cars. Uh, it's a common question and I wanted to address that as well as uh, talk about some other things, not just the air pressure required at your gun to paint the cars, uh, but also air compressor facts and talk, talking about a little bit about CFM and high volume and low pressure spray guns and also low volume low pressure spray guns and why you actually may want to be using a low volume low pressure spray gun all right so so let's get into it now before we end this presentation today i want to remind you to uh, be sure to go to learnautobodyandpaint.com right go to the website you can go there by just typing in learnautobodyandpaint.com or clicking the link below if you're on YouTube. It'll take you over to the website so you could download your free 85 page auto body and paint manual. Now there's a lot of information in there, 85 full pages of step-by-step -step information on how to paint a car or start your project. Uh, we talk about everything about automotive painting and uh, so it'll clear things up for you, make things easier, all right? So uh, let's get started. So air pressure required to paint cars, okay? Um, let's just talk about high volume, low pressure really quickly. Um, you need about 26 to 29 PSI on your spray gun. So you have your spray gun. If you have a digital type, uh, you want to be sure you squeeze your spray gun with just air coming out. And you want to read about 26 pounds on your, your little digital gauge or your dial, your analog dial. Okay, 26 pounds is good for base coat. If you're going to be spraying, uh, spraying a two-stage paint, base coat, 26 pounds is fine. And I usually like to up it up about two, three pounds when spraying clear coat. All right, so after you clean your gun all up and you're ready to do your clear, uh, go ahead and notch it up till about 29 pounds. Uh, I do 28, but for an extra boost, more atomization, you can go up to 29 pounds. Uh, above that, you really don't have to go, okay? Uh, so that's with high volume, low pressure. And most high volume, low pressure guns use about 10 to 14 CFM. Low volume, low pressure, what we have here, gravity guns, okay, the same gravity guns, not the siphon where the cup is on the bottom, the gravity gun, uh, uses about, you know, a low pressure, uses about five to seven CFM uh, at 40 pounds per square inch, which is really low. And if you're doing like DIY stuff and you have a small compressor in your garage, 20 gallon, 30 gallon tank with a one to two horsepower, something small. Uh, I really suggest <coughs> getting a low volume, low pressure spray gun because uh, you're gonna be able to spray more. Uh, your tank's gonna be able to keep up. Uh, you're not gonna run out of your high volume pressure like if you're using a high volume, low pressure with a small tank. You're gonna run out of air in your garage and you're gonna have to adjust your gun uh, to bring the volume back up again. Uh, until your tank catches up to fill up your little small air tank again. I hope you understand. And that usually sprays at 10 to 15 PSI. All right, so you only need about 10 to 15 PSI, uh, and it's gonna be using up five to seven CFM at 40 pounds per square inch. So this is a great, great gun here uh, for DIY guys with small tanks. And you know what? I've been doing some research and looking up a lot of information on low volume, low pressure guns and you can get amazing guns nowadays for under $100 and I'm going to start doing some real reviews on these products very shortly, uh, doing some spray panels and testing and, and just showing you how this stuff works so I think you're really going to like it and just remember that I'm going to be doing a complete blog post on this video so if you're on YouTube, click the link below, it'll take you to the blog. Uh, where all of this is going to be in text format. It's going to be easier for you to understand uh, if you kind of maybe miss something that I just said, okay? Now, let's just talk about, so those are the paint pressures, okay? Paint pressures, um, and you, you're going to be spraying at about 10 to 15 PSI with the low volume. Uh, you could, you know, that's recommended. Now, I would probably move it up a little bit more to get more atomization out of your paints, you know? I would probably still spray at about 22 to 24, even up to 25 PSI with even a low volume, low pressure. All right, so with the low volume, low pressure spray gun, remember, you're gonna be spraying at 10 to 15 PSI at your nozzle tip. All right, so when you got your gun pulled, trigger pulled all the way down, 10 to 15 PSI in your gauge, 
you're good. All right, you'll be putting out some pretty nice finishes. Now, let's just talk about some facts about air compressors, okay? Like I said, the DIY guys, if you're a DIY, you have a small setup at home, uh, you wanna make sure you have a 20 to 30 gallon setup, uh, and you wanna make sure to have at least a 1.5 to 2.0, higher the better, you know? Uh, with air compressors, the more volume, the more horsepower that you have, the better you are off to be, all right? So just remember, the more you can afford, get the best, uh, you know, the best that you can. And you want to make sure that you're getting a 1.5 to a 2.0 horsepower under load, all right? A lot of the horsepower ratings nowadays on air compressors are inflated, you know? It's not really a real horsepower uh, because I don't know how they're measuring it nowadays, but it's, it's really not accurate like the old days. The old days, if it said two horsepower, it was a two horsepower uh, engine on your, uh, a two horsepower motor. And nowadays it says two, ho it's a two horsepower motor, but they say it's a five horsepower. But the thing you have to make sure is the real horsepower and under load, okay? Running horsepower is what you really want to check. All right, 1.5 to 2.0 for a DIY at home uh, with a low volume, low pressure spray gun, you can basically paint the complete car with that if you want to. All right, if you want to get up to the pro levels, right, start using some high volume, low pressure spray guns. Um, you're going to have to move up to at least a 50 gallon, uh, 60 gallon tanks are common, and uh, 80 gallon tanks are common for home pro use. All right, so you want to be sure to do that, and uh, at least a five horsepower under load, okay? Five horsepower. Um, with a 60 or 80 gallon. The most common is an 80 gallon with a five horsepower on it. It's gonna be plenty, plenty power for you to uh, completely use a high volume, low pressure spray gun, uh, you know, giving you 10 to 14 CFM at 90, uh, 90 PSI. <coughs> now, let's just go back over here for, for a second. SCFM means standard cubic feet Per minute. You usually gauge this metric here at 40 and 90 PSI. So if you check out the tech sheet on your gun or your DA sand or whatever air tool that you're using, and it says that it uses you know six to eight CFM at 40 pounds uh, PSI, then you know kind of what how much it's eating while you're using it. All right. Um, uh, the basic siphon feed spray guns and the low volume, low pressure uses about five to seven, like I said, at 40 PSI, or in six to eight at 40 PSI, all right? So this is a regular siphon, and this is a gravity gun, low volume, low pressure, um, and this is a great number because it's low CFM, you're not using a lot of CFM, and you don't need high pressure, okay? High volume uh, to get everything working correctly. All right, so I hope you kind of got this, all right? High volume, low pressure, 26 to 29 in the boot spring, base coat, clear coat. Gravity guns, you're good at 10 to 15 PSI because it uses a lot less volume. Uh, high volume, low pressure, you're gonna be using a little bit more volume, uh, 10 to 14 CFM, and uh, all that good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it cleared up for you. I know when you're first getting started, it can be a little confusing. Um, but my goal is to try to make it not confusing for you. So if you want to learn more about this, check out the blog. Like I said, if you're on YouTube, click the link below, go to the blog. We're going to have a full length post on all this. Uh, hopefully it'll be a lot easier for you to, to read and check out. And uh, also check out our VIP membership course where we have thousands and thousands of VIP members from all across the world. Uh, who are learning about auto body and paint strategies, customization, if you want to learn how to paint with pearls, flakes, candies, whatever you're doing, install Lamborghini doors, do all kinds of crazy body customizations with uh, fiberglass and Bondo and all that. We cover all of those steps within the VIP course at learnautobodyandpaint.com, so be sure to check that out. Uh, there's incredibly, incredibly a lot of information in there, and I think you're going to like that, all right? So again, it's Tony. Please comment below. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.